Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's lesson in World Geography class. Today's lesson is going to be on the topic of location. Um, and our essential question today is going to be, what is location? So if you would be kind enough to write that at the top of your Cornell notes, uh, we will get started here in just a moment. Now we know that location is one of the five themes of geography and when you ask yourself what is location the average person is going to say well that's, that's where I am my location is where I am and there is truth to that um, so what is location will be your left side question here and your basic definition of location is what I just described location is a description of where some place is let's move me out of the way there Location answers the question, where is it? So if you're describing where you are, you're describing your location. But there are two different kinds of location. One of them is called absolute location. Absolute location, when you hear the word absolute, I want you to think exact. Absolute location means your exact location. And we use longitude and latitude to describe our absolute location. So absolute location is a description of location, which includes an exact point where longitude and latitude lines cross. Uh, we're going to go into that in a lot more detail uh, as we proceed forward through this lesson. There's another way we describe location, and this is the way the average person describes location on a day to day basis. And that's called relative location. Relative location is a description of location which uses local landmarks such as in the valley, along the river, in the mountains, etc. So if you say my house is down the street from USA Market, you're using your relative location. If you say meet me at the bike racks after school, you are giving a relative location and using that to describe where you want to meet your friend. Um, that's what most people do. If you're saying, please meet me at 44 degrees, 54 seconds north latitude and 123 degrees west longitude, you're either using your phone apps too much or you're really nerdy. Um, but it has been done before. Maybe you like playing geocaching. If you like geocaching, longitude and latitude and absolute location really come in handy. So our first left side question is going to be, what is latitude? Uh, we like to say your latitude affects your attitude. Um, latitude is one of the measurements we use to measure absolute location. Uh, and the first fact you need to know about latitude is that latitude lines travel in an east-west direction, but they tell us how far we are north or south from the equator. So notice here, the lines go from east to west. East is right, west is left. But they tell us how far we are north or south from this imaginary line zero degrees, which we call the equator. So the equator does not have an N or an S after it because it is neither north nor south. But every other line of latitude has an N or an S after it because it's either north or south from the equator. So we are at about 45 degrees north from the equator uh, based on our latitude. Uh, lines of latitude are called parallels. So the actual names of the lines themselves are called parallels. So if you uh, have been through Kaiser or along I-5, you'll see a sign that says now crossing the 45th parallel. That means you're crossing a line that's 45 degrees north of the equator. And that's important because it's exactly halfway between the equator and the North Pole. So that kind of makes it a thing. Um, so the equator, as I said before, is zero degrees latitude, and it divides the Earth into the northern and the southern hemisphere. Uh, hemisphere is a word meaning half of a sphere. So if you have... If you're down here, you're in the southern hemisphere, and if you're up here, you're in the northern hemisphere. And then another thing you'd want to know is that the North Pole is 90 degrees north latitude, 
and the south pole is 90 degrees south latitude so there's no such thing as 91 degrees north latitude it stops at 90 the north pole is 90. there's no such thing as 91 degrees south latitude it stops at 90 90 degrees is the south pole um, and i'll describe that to you in a little bit more detail in the next lesson so we're going to go ahead and move on to the next slide which you might guess has to do with longitude Oh my goodness, it does have to do with longitude. Our next left side question is what is longitude? Um, and uh, basically longitude is almost completely the opposite of latitude, but there are some small distinctions. First of all, longitude lines travel in a north-south direction and they measure the distance east or west from the prime meridian. So that is the opposite of latitude lines. The lines go from top to bottom or from north to south, but their purpose is to tell us how far we are east or west from the prime meridian. So east over here, all of these lines would have E's after them, and all of these lines would have W's after them, representing east or west from the prime meridian. And lines of longitude are called meridians. So one thing I'd like you to maybe like just say out loud is, Lines of latitude are called parallels. Lines of longitude are called meridians. Lines of latitude are called parallels. Lines of longitude are called meridians. The lines themselves have different names, and that's how you know what they are. Uh, the prime meridian, which is actually right here, is zero degrees longitude, and it divides the Earth into the eastern hemisphere and the western hemisphere. Okay. So just like there's a northern hemisphere and a southern hemisphere, there's an eastern hemisphere and a western hemisphere. Um, we live in the northern hemisphere. We live in the western hemisphere. Then on the opposite side of the earth from the prime meridian is a line called the international date line. It is 180 degrees longitude. And just like there's no such thing as 91 degrees latitude there's no such thing as 181 degrees longitude 180 is the maximum that is the international date line and it's on the opposite side of the earth from the prime meridian and we're going to discuss that in a little bit more detail uh, here in a few minutes so the other thing you need to know is that a hemisphere is half of a sphere or half of the earth Every single one of these underlined terms on these three slides is going to be on your location test. So in terms of knowing the definitions, this particular slideshow and this particular YouTube video will be good and will be helpful for you in terms of studying for the test and getting most of the test answers. I am going to ask you to compare and contrast longitude and latitude, so knowing the difference. Uh, the one other difference I would want to point out is notice that the, the meridians all meet at the north and south poles. So parallels, just like the name would say, are lines that never touch each other and they're always the same distance apart. So no one parallel ever touches another. But all of the meridians actually meet each other at the north pole and the south pole. So it's they, 1 o'clock. It's 1 o'clock. So they literally start at the north and south pole and they are farthest apart at the equator and then as you get closer to the poles they draw closer together again which you can really see nicely um, in this picture so ladies and gentlemen that's basically your introduction uh, on the next video i'm going to show examples and i'm going to use google earth to show you how we actually use uh, longitude and latitude to mark our location on the Earth's surface. But I'm going to save that for another video. This one is primarily geared towards just introducing you to um, your basic definition. So it would be good for you to go ahead and write a summary. And in that summary, it would be really good if you could compare and contrast the differences between longitude and latitude. Because if you can do that, A, you understand them, and B, you're actually preparing yourself for the test. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Blumendahl 
Signing off until next time on the Waldo Middle School Social Studies YouTube Network.